Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the NDA Podcast. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin and Owexifer. We are today going to be going over the halfway point of the season. We're, we're officially at least four weeks into the season, so we're going to recap some of the uh, events that have transpired throughout the season and the outlook of the potential playoff implications that have arose because of the uh, the standings that currently sit as they do. So first and foremost, thank you for both you guys for uh, joining me today. Feels good to be back. Uh, it's mm-hmm. been a minute. Lex, how you feeling? Uh, pretty good. Uh, been about four weeks, five weeks ish. The last uh, month. Um, yeah, as we are sitting down to record this, we are halfway through our fifth week. I would say. Yeah. Even though it's been it's a Friday, games usually don't get played till the weekend. So I'd say we're halfway through week five. Yeah. Um, how's it been for you, gentlemen? How are we finding regulation H and draft uh... league? Well, I'll go first because I'm 0-3. Oh, uh, I'm struggling. I'm struggling a little bit. I don't know. I think it's just because we've done this thing usually where we help each other team build and then prep. And we haven't done that like at all this season. Like Initially, we tried to do it for week one. But obviously, you know, Ryder, unfortunately, um, you know, we had to let him take a step back here to focus on himself and do what he needs to do to, you know, get into the position to be able to play again luck and everything to, to Ryder, hopefully he's all that, but that was the only week where we uh, had actually done any sort of prep work, and now it's like, oh, and now I'm like, because I kind of, I wanted to see, this is kind of like a, a self-experiment, which I might have to double back on, because uh, I don't want to get relegated, team build on my own, and I feel like the team building is holding me back, ah, whatever, 0-3, kind of sucks, Wex, how you feeling about the season so far? Um, didn't start off too hot. Um, uh, 0-2, had a rough week one against, uh, Phoenix. Had, um, a few pyro hacks knocking my way, but it is what it is. Week two was just rough all around, but it bounced back now 2-2. Two two. Um, in the last two weeks against Quartz and Cat. Um, tricky matchups to navigate, but happy with how I played, happy with how it ended up. Uh, 2-2, two two, sitting kind of mid-table right now. Um, with plenty of games to play in the season. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty okay. Gallade's been putting in pretty big work for me, uh, personally. I think it's sitting at about third in the kill leaders at the minute. Yeah, it's third with 11 kills. So, I've been pretty happy with how I've been playing. Um, could be 3-1 and one on a different day, uh, but also could be 1-3. and three. So, oh well, it's been pretty okay. I've been happy with my performance. Looking forward to the rest of the season, like my team. Uh, speaking of my team, Kev, how are you finding our team? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, look at your schedule, Lex. You've gotten through Sneasler, Dozo, Arch, and Size Bam. There are there, yeah, there better days ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> true. Annoying, annoying as things that have to play against. So, yeah. To be 2 at 2 is not, uh, is not too I mean, I, I, have Moong, I have a Moongus this week, so we'll see how, <laughs> we'll see how that, that uh, matches up into it. But no, I'm, yeah, I've had a pretty Moongus rough. is easy, bro. One Mon gets the safety goggles, the rest of the team gets paragraphs, matchups all. <laughs> Honestly, true. Yes. And Moongus against Fungus this week. And Moongus v Fungus this week. We're going to see. But no, look true, forward to it. Um, yeah, your, your, uh, your thoughts on your season, Kev, so far? Um, I think I actually have very much enjoyed the season so far. I have a very very tough very tough loss against your boy week one, which, you know, happens. He's a good player. Uh, I can't be too mad about that one. Won my next two pretty, pretty comfortably. Got hacked out of a week four win and then won a nice game with actually a really cool tech that saved the shit out of me. I won't lie. I was kind of down bad without it. Feels Team feels really good. I don't know how much I love Palma and Gallade together. They've obviously like been good Like when I brought them. I think I might maybe look to make a transaction and decide between the two of them. I'm going to the end of the think it's we'll Palma. Yeah, Palma. I'm like, thinking Palma. Yeah, Palma's like, felt good, but Gallade offers a little more tech outside of I'm not getting fake out, so I don't know. It's tough. They maybe um, right you might fit better into the team with follow me. I mean, it does like the same yeah. thing, but yeah. They do pretty good. The, uh, where just... I've won the draft or felt the best, I think, is my B and C tier. Like, well, just Lorantis. Lorantis and my B tiers have felt so good. Cryagonal has been amazing. Tinky has been amazing. I haven't got a ton of value out of Fungus, but one week it came against uh, Riolu. It did amazing. Been really good. I learned the, <laughs> the interaction. I don't know if you guys saw a lot of this week. I had rivalry on Haxorus in my team builder, and I was like, 
I was like, this could be really good if he's like got like some of the same gender Pokemon. And I was like, wait, it actually gets weakened if they're the opposing gender. Like, like this is like this is gonna hurt me a little bit. Like, I don't want to do that. Let me run Moldbreaker. And the idea was to run Houseurus next to Cryogonal, so I don't get Yan Mega speed boost uh, Tailwind swept. That way, Cry- Scar Cryogonal outspeeds Yan Mega at their plus one. I can spam Icy Wind and either like Dragon Move, Rock Move, or Ground. Like, I have Earthquake for a lot of his stuff with Haxorus. I was even tear ground. <laughs> But I switched it to Mold Breaker, and I clicked EQ and killed my own Cryogonal because it ignored my own Levitate. That, was, uh, <laughs> That's that was one of my brighter moments so far of the season. Ended up not mattering, thankfully. I actually, but I couldn't like rely oh, on that pair again. Could have happened with the Misty Explosion sort of stuff that we saw happen before. Yeah, literally, like <laughs> it was so stupid. Uh, That's been my funniest moment so far, I guess. Uh, mm. I'm laughing because I still won. <laughs> if, I, if I had lost because I'm stupid, then I would have been a little more salty. But. Yeah, I mean, I had, yeah. I, had, I, had, I had to do like my own testing on ladder with like a random account because I wasn't sure if with Cottony in Psychic Terrain, if Misty Terrain would go up or not. I was like, it took me a while to figure it out. And I was like, I'm just going to make a random ass team on, on a random account, go onto the red cage and just see if it works. I made like, I had, um I just led like in DD. And then I had Cottony represented, and I just one was like, okay, I wonder if this works. And then luckily, that worked out for me. It's always funny when you have to test something on ladder just to see an interaction, and it's like, <laughs> like the people, I'm the people you pair into. I'm sure they're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, I, like I think I, I think it was a metronome team that I just edited. So someone seeing like I think it was Blissey or whatever Dragonite, whatever I was on the team. Yeah, I don't think we have much else to say. We can just go over sort of the standings, I guess. There's not really much else to go over. I have a quick question for Justin. Justin saying you're you're zero and three. Do you think it's just like like you said that not being able to prep? Do you think it's like do you do you see yourself making team changes? All right. So every single one of my months have a purpose. But I really don't see myself <laughs> breaking away, <laughs> breaking away from them at any point. The only thing that I might change is the uh, Ursula for uh, for Graf combo. I, as much as I love Trick Room, it, it's if it's very obvious. It's very easily counterable, so maybe I opt for something with a little bit more speed, and then try to get a trick room center in my my A tier or my B tier. Something that's pretty consistent, something that I, I know that for the most part would be able to get it set up and set up nicely. So, I mean, that's something to consider. I mean, of, of course, I, I want to use Ursula. I think it's a great, very powerful um, Mon to have, especially with its Mind's Eye and its ability to hit ghost types with the normal type move and its stab, and it's just a high damage output Mon. But it's just so easily preppable for and encounterable it's just i don't know it, it's i'm finding it a bit difficult to really bring it to its full uh full power in, in a draft format where you can specifically um create a team to specifically counter what you're trying to do rather than something if you're playing on ladder for example you have a bunch of different um teams that you can have to prep for and you're not going to know which one you're going to get so that's why ursa luna really does a good job because not all the time we have a team that specifically counters an ursa luna trick room team right so i don't know it, it's it's a little difficult it, it's not it's not easy to, to try and use this team by any means because it is pretty one-dimensional you want to get trick room up and you just try to stop that so what can you do outside of it and my outside of it are pretty thin so we'll see i mean i'll, I'll probably give it another week or so if need be if i need a big change i mean my S tiers are probably what I'll draft first. There's, I'm just looking through the S tiers. It is just like crazy what doesn't get drafted when there's like, <laughs> like things mm. that are terrorizing the metagame that just like don't get drafted. It's just like crazy to me. It's just so funny. Like our division I mean, doesn't Ursula should have been one of them for me. No one, so, no one has Dragon Pillar uh, going to jump. Yeah, funnily enough, Ursula Blood Moon has been like very underwhelming in the IRL circuit. I think it is due a big performance soon. Someone will figure it out, but uh, it hasn't like mm. done much yet. I still obviously think it's so good. It's just tough. Sneezler, Sneezler isn't yeah, picked up in your division. No Sneezler in our division. No Prim. No Porygon. No like Pelipper. No Pelipper. Oh, no. Dude, the one that's crazy is Dragapult and not taken. Dragapult and Garchomp. Two of them. The both of those Pokemon are absolutely menaces in the current format. It is insane that they're <laughs> just sitting there. But going Dragapult would be crazy. Like that'd be like the full. What, dude, Dragapult like the Buzz is actually a really good combination. Maybe worth mm-hmm. considering. <laughs> that that team. Uh, do very do well. tell, do tell. How is this a very good? Uh... Well, like you just run choice banded Dragonite or uh, Dragonpole with Dragon Darts, and you just follow me with Electabuzz. It's really easy. You just click buttons. Yeah. You just allowed to click buttons with Dragonpole. Huh. Pretty much. I mean, it's not like the only way to do it. I feel like Dragonpole has utility physically and special. So it's like mm-hmm. we've seen a Specs Dragonpole get top eight this past weekend in Louisville. So it's like. 
Yeah, Fex is also pretty good on it. It's Fex very strong. Cool. You don't right. have to like Terra or rely on Phantom Force to use your ghost typing if you're special. So that's really cool. Yeah. But, and then Garchomp is like also terrorizing the meta. Ground is ground and dragon is just such a good typing. Uh, obviously tough in draft. We are I'm talking about things that aren't related to draft. Draft is tough. You know, ice moves hurt. Um, as we saw, I watched uh, Conk and uh, Blake's game yesterday, and Conk led with High Dragon, and Blake clicked on turn one, Terra Fairy, Terra Blast. It's like, yep, that's going to happen a lot of the time. Welcome yeah. To draft league. But definitely. Yeah, I experienced that first day, and that one sucked. Yeah. There's definitely, like, not every Pokemon is going to suffer more than others. Like, they do require a bit of a Terra Hogging, though. I haven't felt it too bad with Volcarona. I feel like a lot of people haven't actually spammed Brock moves against me. Funnily enough, so yeah, I haven't yeah. felt that yet. No, I haven't brought it too too much, but yeah, it's definitely uh, oh, out here. Maybe, maybe we make a switch. I might like. So I'm gonna hit you in the DMs after this. I got some. I got some thoughts. Oh, you know what? Gothitelle is still available. <laughs> huh. Gothitelle. Huh. Um, Does Gothitelle solve your issues? Oh, you have that Azumarill. Okay. That's cool, actually. Uh, that is a, a cool tech that could possibly uh, come out. That is a great transition for, I think, the Kill Leaderboard and the Uva Academy, as we were kind of talking about. We have one coach, Sir Sir Conkle Donk, who is 5-0, has not dropped a single game, and Azumarill is the Kill, kill Leader. Some of those, huge power, but also 10 of them are Parish Song. <laughs> Ten of them Aren't they? out of his thirteen, according to the KO attack users. No way. Uh, Parasong has ten. Parasong is tenth in the overall KO leaders, and it is only Azumarill. <laughs> Followed by Expanding Force knock knockoff is a lot actually. Close combat and Heat Wave. Oh. Oh, dude, Heat Wave is a bad oh. move. I don't like this propaganda that it's number one. Um, uh, so but... uh, I'm gonna say this right now, just because I saw it live. Of course, uh, he just clicked Psychic into a Dark type Mon. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's the quartz we all know and love. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm watching it. Different, there's a game going on right now between quartz and yeah. quartz has just like um, psychic into a, a terror dark wheezing. He's uh, following like quartz saying, "Hey, why did I do that?" He did something like that already as well. Yeah, he, was, he did something He's against Kong, I think, or that was germ. Oh no, germ! Wait, germ did something. Uh, what did germ do against Kong? I think it was Kong. Um, psychic terrain. Yeah, I'm not even psychic terrain. Oh, I forget, man. It was funny. It was, it was something, and we're just like, oh. <laughs> I, like, messaged him about it. I was like, he had, like, such a clear play, and then he just like, didn't click that. Oh, he clicked the grass move into Azumarill a second time, despite seeing right, that it was right. it. And I was like, germ, <laughs> come on, man. Anyway, um, yeah, so maybe Azumarill isn't that bad of a... Uh, uh, got to tell with Paris Trap isn't that bad of a move, because... Uh, Conk is k literally killing the entire Uva Academy with it. Um, yeah. But yeah. What else has happened in the Uva Academy, Wex? Um, I'll have to go back to the half this game. Uh, Blake and Miami, Miami Maractus are 3 and 1. Uh, Pat and the, or Matt and the Bristol Bradlands are 3 and 0. Oh. Um, both doing very well indeed in their first season in the division. Uh, Blake's only loss, I think, is to Conk, so not the worst loss in the world, to be honest. Blake had uh, a really cool. Uh, I think he had a really cool set against Kason where he brought bulk up Ensign, I think with like close combat and shit, which is like, it's very refreshing to see yeah. Ensign Aurora like actually try and do damage rather than just, just be annoying, yeah. hmm. uh, which he's so good at. We, we have to commend him for how annoying he is, but uh, it was very cool to see a bulk up set. Uh, Kason did not handle it well, losing that week 0-2. Um, I also want to say before Wex continues, we have had some like some people, people get married some people get married some people go on like trips and stuff so uh you know yeah so, obviously so po the games obviously are pokemon is life but it's, you know some things do take a little bit so, yeah we've had, uh, we've had uh we've had phoenix go on his honeymoon and we've had jarm get married so everyone's played a different amount of games like Kong's played five phoenix has played one and um, a lot of people play between <laughs> three and four so there's been a lot going on in the division um, well, yeah, no, it's been pretty good. Um, Armor Rouge is doing pretty well for Cat. Um, a lot of expanding force being clicked by Cat, so doing well I'm sitting surprised. in fifth place. Two two. No, I mean, we all kind of knew <laughs> that it was going to happen, but um, it's nice to see that expectations are reality, I suppose. Um, but yeah, um, nothing really much else going on, I suppose. Everyone's just trying to catch up at this stage in this next couple of week or two, which, and I mean, we all know that's going to eventually catch up. We'll be fine. Um, 
Well, yeah, so top eight at the moment is Conk Long, Harford, Haryanas, uh, Blake, Mami, Raktus, Matt, and the Burst of Prelooms, Suburban Braviary, and Glitchy. Crazy, uh, can't some refresh. <laughs> you just cut out like crazy. What'd you say? Oh, did I? Uh, number one, Are Harford, Haryanas. Number two, Miami Maractus. Number three, Bristol Brelooms. Mm -hmm. Number four, Suburban Braviary. Five, Suburban Skitties. Six, Leinster Defion. Seven, Jackson Moltres. And eight, J Glasgow Gengars. We're running a top eight. And then Jersey Skies, Texas Gengars. Grand State Gravel Rocks. And the Oregon State Bidoofs are running at the bottom four for now. Very, very mm -hmm. early scenes here. Very early scenes. Halfway through the season. I mean, we can see redemption arcs, arcs go on. I've had it in the past. Um, in whatever season that was, season three, season four. Um, anything can change. And yeah. Are you saying there's still time for Justin? Of course, speaking of Justin and his uh, Redemption Arc coming up, um, yeah, you guys can talk about Naranja Academy, I think. Um, Naranja has been very interesting, actually. Um, your boy has finally lost. I would have started hey. with that. That's really, that's like really cool. Uh, hey. Not to prey on his downfall, because he's the GOAT and has been handling a ton of the dock work this season. Um, our absolute, absolute GOAT uh, hold down the fort. But we, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little excited that he's lost twice. Um, he has lost, he got dozoed, I think. I didn't actually watch it, but he did lose a Riolu. Um, I'm curious if he got Don dozoed to Oblivion. And then he lost again to Philadelphia Piplups, who started out 0 3, but I think really unlucky, like very unluckily. I think Charlie's team is really good, has a lot of cool techs. And uh, then he got, he got some luck against me, we will say. And then he then carried that momentum to beat. Uh, said screw your luck, I'm gonna just beat your boy 2 0 and is back in the wind column. So, uh, very big performances from him. But yeah, your boy finally hit two losses on the schedule. It has been a while since he has lost. I wonder how he's dealing with that. Um, the dude's probably thinking he fell off a cliff. It's like, <laughs> no, that's not the case. What happened was he came back to reality. All right, you can't go on a run. Forever. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm looking at the games, I'm seeing if he got dozoed really quickly. Uh, game two when he won, there was no Dozo involved. Uh, there was a Dozo when he lost game one. And game three, was there a Dozo? Um, there was. And he just led Dozo, which is crazy, and still won. Real has been doing that. Uh, leading Dozo is never a recipe for success in my... Uh, obviously, you can lead it on its own. Leading it with the Tatsu is just psychotic. Um, your opponent still has all their resources left. And if they prep well, they should be able to deal with it. But hey, it worked, man. Who am I to judge? That was uh, Riolu's first win as well against uh, your boy. So big, big dub there. Always feels good to beat someone that didn't lose a single set last season. Yeah. A lot of parody in Naranja right now. Yeah, for sure. We have two undefeated coaches still remaining in our division. Um, not We are technically in week five. So again, not every game has been played. I mean, we have um, three. But... <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but one of them is 1-0. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to count. One of, ours are 4-0 uh, and 3-0. Oh, and and oh, so I'm going to actually count those. Uh, well, then we yeah. have two at least. Um, we have uh, Zach Straw Hat of the Florida Well Springs and Swamp. Um, I mean, both just have like, I mean, are we surprised? Like, Conks S tiers, Goldengo High Dragon, great synergy. Art is 5 0. Zach has Goldengo High Dragon, 3 0. Has some more games to play, but just overall has a really strong team. I'm not surprised that, and he's definitely like going like all out this season. Like, he's a friend of mine who's been like, like he's, he's been prepping hard. Um, very thankful I don't play him this season. Um, and then we have Swamp. Swamp is, you know, an icon of our draft league and uh, also just has like a demon team. Uh, the synergies, I mean, Titar Excadrill is, you look at it and it's all a little top heavy with physical attackers. And then his whole B tier is like pretty decent special attackers with like Inteleon, Forges, Striflim. Like he just has a very strong diverse team. I think uh, maybe we under tiered the Tauros forms a little bit. I think they could have honestly went up to S. They're very, very strong. So not surprised to see these two teams still undefeated with games to play, for sure. But yeah, who's, uh, Justin, who's sitting, in, who's sitting with you in Struggleville? Sitting with me in Struggleville? Well, it'd be fun if my PC wasn't uh, being uh, a piece of dog I, shit. I, I, I just I wanted to include happened. you in the conversation, but I, I can keep you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, give me one. I'm sitting second right now, but I've played five games, so we'll, Ooh, uh, we'll see uh, where I'm Philly Flygon, is that Tyson? That is indeed Tyson. Tyson's in Struggleville with me. We're holding hands together as we frolic through the world of pain and hurt. Don't really know what's going on there. I, I'll be honest, I just record the games. I don't actually really watch them, if that makes sense. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, me and uh, Rio well, were sitting at the same is, amount of points. When I played Tyson, he hadn't changed his team from the week from week one. I don't know if he's uh, finding amounts, large amounts of time to prep and counterbuild. But I will say, he's... 
showed up every week and played this game, so I cannot be overly frustrated with that. Yeah. But, yeah, you and him are definitely in struggle, Bill. Who else is down there? Uh, it's uh, just... <laughs> Riolu <laughs> is... Not Riolu, I mean, Riolu, yeah. Um, and uh, Gummy. Gummy's two and three right now. He's played all of his games. Congratulations. Not everyone okay, can say that, especially myself. Um, but he's two and three, but he's, he is on the brink of playoffs, not playoffs. So... Um, definitely someone to keep your eye out on. Just like maybe they'll have um, some sort of come up. Maybe they have a fall off. They're still in that you know finicky little area there. But another person, Philly, uh, Philadelphia Piplups, are also two and three. So uh, also in that same position where they have two wins only through five games. Um, I say that as someone who's zero and three. So don't take it personal. But uh, <laughs> he's played all five games. You got two games to match him. True, I could, and if I win, uh, if I win two o two o, I get six points. I get the eight points total. I'd be ahead of them. Okay, that's uh, that's something to look forward to. But then it's also it's like who am I facing? And uh, to be honest, I don't know. I haven't done any prep yet. That might be the root of your issues, but um, that's probably the root cause as to why I'm feeling this pain. The Bronx you bundle. Have to play, yeah, you have to play Alex and Yanchuk, who is our new substitute coach uh, for Ryder, who has started off the season one on one. Um, I played him, and he 2 0 the shit out of Alex, to be fair to him. Uh, Giga Impact, Zorog, Hasui. Watch out, Justin. Um, yeah, it does so, Yauch damage. It does do some Yauch damage. Um, very accurate, very accurate damage. Both teams are very annoying to prep for, so you'll have a lot of fun, I think. I, uh, I don't know if I will. <laughs> These are the best matches to prep for. You have to put in the most amount of effort and actually cook. To have matchups in these teams, I think. Torkoal and DD Flamigo Lilligant is uh, fun. He just picked up Exeggutor, which top forward Louisville Regional with DD and Torkoal. So I told him to. It was very cool. Um, no one had that on their bingo card. Um, I told him to pit draft Exeggutor from the start, as it has the perfect synergy with the team, and he went the other way. It took someone getting top four with it at a regional for him to, co to convince him, which I guess is fair, even though I said it from the start. Um, something I've noticed about uh, this draft league so far is that maybe we under-tiered Blaziken. It has been doing so well. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just the coaches using it. Uh, I don't know, but Blaziken has a lot of kills for Alex, and it is doing very well for uh, Kong. It's just like you get one speed boost up, and then Blaziken starts clicking buttons. He is so good offensively, with mostly probably a focus sash. This is really good value in that tier, I think. That mon is uh, scary for sure. Um, but Justin, give up great time prepping for these teams. Um, well, I can I can assure you now I won't. <laughs> I'll, I'll offer my assistance if you want. I don't know. No, 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 no. I, I put myself work. into this mess. I, I got to get myself out. All right. That's, All right. That's, I, I respect it. I got to I gotta at least, listen, mm. how long have I been doing this little, little tandem action since, what, 20? We got to, I got to, I got to see if I can step out from, uh, from behind that big old shadow of yours with your husky that's, shoulders. Yeah, that's and, crazy. And see if <laughs> see if I can, you know, do it on my own. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I have a different I'm gonna have to do like different approaches, different strategies and things like that. Utilize all the all my team members and, and, and see what can actually be uh, useful. Uh, maybe pull out some like wonky strats that maybe do a little gimmick one win because no one was prepping for it. Maybe that's something that I could do. I'm I'm not listen. If I can give weakness policy to a <laughs> to a dust nor, I can do anything. Oh, um, yeah, don't don't you forget about that ever. That was pretty solid. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll see. I, I got. I, I got to double check in fear that you didn't have dust nor on your team. <laughs> I will literally pick up dust nor right before it's, we have our match. Just to scare you. Uh, it's on Zach's team. Unfortunately, I am saved. All right, I have to do a trade. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> um, I'll give you my S tier for dust nor. Deal. Sounds like legally, I have to remind you guys that you can't trade an S tier for a B tier. It's not how that works. But oh, of course, uh, it would be funny if someone wanted to tank and then give me all their S tiers so I can just have a fun time. But whatever happens, you know, maybe I just go, maybe I just go Dundozo, Tatsu, Giri, and call it a day. I don't know. Uh, you'd have to make a trade with uh, Riolu on that one. But yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> Because I, I think you're the kind of scumbag that would love Dozo Tatsu to draft, and I'm surprised we haven't done it yet. I mean, that would be awesome. And the only issue is, uh, well, uh, you have burns, so you can terror fire to avoid that. Uh, also, 
every team can run a Hazemon or a clear smog or something. So um, not great. Uh, if you know it's coming, you can stop it from being super strong. And if you stop it from being super strong with the, the two Omni boosts, well, it's really not that threatening and it's not that tanky either. Uh, especially when you can only hit the one, not the other. So I did that this week. Um, yeah. I will say if they get their counters, it's all about positioning. You can, uh, yeah, it's all can, about trust. You got to get rid of their, their counters early taunt, taunt their haze user. stuff. Like that. I, I think it has a lot of play. I think it's still really good. Uh, but I think you would find a way to enjoy it if you did draft it. But unfortunately it is gone. Um, Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah. Uh, I know what we didn't talk about yet. Um, Jared, new coach, the Dubai Drakeviches, is sitting at uh, three and one. Has been playing pretty well. He's got a good big match against uh, Zach this week. Um, Snow has been pretty good. I think pe- people are. He's been. I think his kill leader is Frostmoth. We're getting a lot of value out of. Dude, uh, Frostmoth. I, I played Frostmoth. too. Frostmoth okay, yeah, you played him. Fucked me up. I was like, holy shit, I couldn't do anything to this guy. Um, I don't understand why that was, but I, I thought I was going in there with a good idea of what I wanted to do, and then all of a sudden I'm getting absolutely... So, yeah, uh, you know, Frostmoth is a piece of shit, and I wasn't a big fan of him. Uh, what was it, using Quiver Dance? I don't even fucking remember, but I couldn't touch that thing with anything. My biggest mistake, uh, I forget, I, I think it was against Gudra, it's a separate thing. Um, I know it's AV, and I let Kaparaja die, and I should have done that. So I made a big oopsie. I think that was against uh, uh, Gummy. So that felt bad. Uh, really could have won that game still, but it is what it is. Anyway, what were we saying before this? Um, Jared's having a good season. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, huh. we'll how did we get how here? He does against Zach, who is currently undefeated. Um, so we shall see how that goes. I don't know. Think, uh, Jared's team particularly likes. Goldengo, we will probably see Frostmaw, Terra to resist it and do something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we what's our what's our kill leaders looking like? Who's uh, who's taking names so far? Yeah, well, I swear, no matter how bad or good Wex is doing in a league, <laughs> he just has someone towards the top of the kill leaders like every time. <laughs> you just rely on like one person to get all your kills all the time. I just I, like I'm not saying I pick favorites, but I mean like. <laughs> I kind of seems I would love like to go a, back at all the old kill docs and just see that like, I guarantee that you were in the top three. Yeah, I mean I've had like annihilate, top. like annihilate was pretty high. Uh, Medgross and Evelhall were both high. Drakevish was top. Um, yeah, I've had a lot. Oh, those well. are the, definitely the ones I remember too, off the top of my head. I don't know about the other ones. I remember like Evelhall and Medgross were like two and four. Some well, shit. Yeah, that was stupid. And I lost that it season. I still can't believe I lost. Is that, the, uh, is that the rider? No. Uh, okay, yeah. know, We've been doing this. We've been doing this. Well, I helped so, rider. I helped rider prep for that one. So sorry about it. <laughs> yeah. That was a whole like five hour, six hour process. So. Sorry, Wex. You'll get your revenge next season against Justin in the Uva Division. Um. Oh, oh no, 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 that's wild. <laughs> that's all right, you're all right. You're you're moving up. You're moving up. My bad. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm moving up. Justin, Justin, though, you know. Just to make me yeah, back come down. on, yo. I'm, that's I mean, not I, true. I'm, I'm a two-time I'm, I'm, champ. I got two-time Justin, champ difference. Justin's going to go 08, but then like win the little tournament so he doesn't get relegated. <laughs> you got them right. <laughs> uh, is it bottom three that promoted? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Three? Bottom three. Oh, oh, I could be out of this. <laughs> um, well, no. So bottom four play the little tournament. So yeah. it's not like actually the bottom. Th- I mean, it's the bottom three after the mini tournament. Who's uh? What's your schedule looking like? You got a game, make up a game against the Unchuck. You have Alex in the Bronx bundles. You have Zach, who is uh undefeated currently, and then me, uh-huh. and then your boy. Ooh, uh-huh. that's, uh-huh. that's uh-huh. gonna be a lot. No, uh, Just some purple looks good no, on you. Uh, no, your uh, your friends down there at the bottom of the table aren't on your schedule, which is funny. My friends in there. Congratulations. <laughs> um, yeah, this is this is gonna be fun. I I. Maybe believe in you as well. How Mark my it. words, I'll see you guys next season. Don't worry about it. Better start learning how to speak Ubanese. Um, hey, oh, fuck <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Uba, Uba. <laughs> um, who else is? 
<laughs> this has to be the, the worst off? to organize. Yeah, I mean, we knew that coming into this podcast that we were going to be all over the place. But, um, oh, we're not watching any replays because that also takes a lot of time. No one wants to listen to that. Oh, what a shame. Anyway, <laughs> so what are the kill leaders? The kill leaders of Naranja are Frostmoth and Chinchino. Frostmoth, Chinchino, and Chandelure. It's like, who would have thought? <laughs> definitely, I think I definitely didn't help. Chandelure's kill stats. That was uh, definitely, definitely pretty bad against me. Where is Charlie's team? Armory's probably got some against me as well. I know Galate uh, got a good bit against. Oh wait, week four, week four. Actually, yeah, my so game against Cap four. probably, my game against Cap probably contributed a lot to <laughs> the talk. Like two, to one, nine, one. Me and Cat. No, to uh, what? Oh, Armory's. Armory's and Galate. Week three. Oh, true. Fair, fair, fair. I think, uh, was it Gummy that used Basket Legion really well against you, Justin? Yeah. I guess he must have. I think he used a couple of uh, Basket Legions doing pretty every, well. Every, it was everything. Yeah, Frostmoth. Gal- Gal- really helping four. with Frostmoth. Galade Gal- <laughs> got four against that, and Armour's got none against me, so okay. I'm trying to help, I'm trying to help the world. Frostmoth and Basket are high up on the table, and coincidentally, both those mons did well against Justin. That wasn't the point. I All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Dustin, you wanted to talk about playoff implications. What are we what are we looking at early on? Oh, well, it's the implication, right? Okay. So, uh, looking at the table, let's look at where things lie. Let's start with the Uva Academy. The Hartford Hiriyama is five and zero. Oh, most definitely making playoffs. Basically, con- like confirmed. If there's no, I, I would say confirmed. Yeah, I would say if you have three wins uh, at this point, uh, most likely you're going to get at least one more. If you're four and four, the odds you making playoffs just basically guaranteed uh from what we've seen in previous seasons i don't think we've ever had in this formatting a team that went four and four that didn't make yeah. the playoffs I unless they were like the, kind of the magic number. like as far as people say like oh magic numbers for this and that i think four is the magic number for here like yeah if you get four I think you're pretty safe yeah so um we have a we have a couple of people that that here in uva that are most likely making Playoffs. I would say the people that are probably almost confirmed to make it, considering their trajectory so far. I would say um, essentially everyone that has two wins at least. I, I feel like everyone in there, um, unless you know, barring a significant drop off, um, all those top six would probably make playoffs here. You have to remember for Uva, Phoenix has only played one game. Likelihood is he could go up. Jam, while we're recording, has just won a game, so Jam is also on two. Jerm is zero and two, so he still has two games to get up there. Like I feel like here there's a lot more. Like a lot of people are going to be the likes of two and two at the moment. There's well, on two wins at the moment, there's four four teams actually. As we're looking at this, it says three, but there is another four, so it's kind of hard to count out people. I think the top three for now are guaranteed. Well, not guaranteed, but are very likely to make it through. And the others, things can go either yeah. way. Like I'm two and two on five points, which isn't necessarily the best situation to be in. Uh, but my losses were fairly rough, three O's, so or two O's, so no points from them. Uh, didn't really help. And one of my wins was a two one, so again, didn't really help. But no. So I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm likely. I feel like I, I obviously can, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Maybe you can talk about the Naranja division then as well, I suppose. I feel like three wins is pretty safe right now. All right, uh, Wax, you think yes. the Black with Ball Toys make the playoffs? Here we go. Here we go. So with the remaining games, they have to go. Let's let's say they have to get three and five with some good with some good sets to their KO ratios. Their KO ratio doesn't look that bad. Their KO is 21 to 26. Their sets ratio does not look the greatest of two, 2 and 6. 0 and 3, which means they'll have to go 3 and 2 against Yanchuk, against uh, uh, Alex, Zach, Kev, and your boy. Now, Zach has been huh. on a hot streak of, of late. Justin, you have a pretty good record against Kev from memory. I do. I, I feel like I do. I have to look at the Legacy Dog once more, but it's not bad. I, I, uh, it does seem... Know, in memory, like in big games... I feel like Justin has an okay record off memory. Your boy though is where I feel like like I feel like Justin might go into the final week two and five, needing a big win in, in his last week. Your boy some year of Venmo. No reason. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna say Justin finishes three and five. And does he get the and spot? I think he misses out on set ratio. I think Justin Dude. finishes nine. Dude, you're, you're disrespecting the double champ. Don't disrespect well, the prove double. Me wrong. Prove me prove me wrong. Go and do it. Where we're feeding I honestly, your I, honestly, I honestly don't think that I can prove you wrong. That's the problem. I don't, <laughs> oh, what, why not? I don't think oh, there's, a, don't do there's a world. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But, all right, so moving on. Uh, I think the, the most likely people from Naranja to make it to playoffs. I mean, I would say everybody with three wins. I mean, that's probably what we're looking at here. Uh, sneakily, though, could your boy just fall off a cliff and then maybe go three and five? 
Maybe. Ah, hey. that, your boy going three and five would mean maybe the world, the world might be ending. Uh, if he goes three and five. At the same time, though, could be one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. Okay, he has to play. Uh, Jared, Justin, and Yanchuk. It's not. Those are not easy games. They're not easy games. No. I appreciate it. Except Justin. So right. Justin's a few. Right. Justin's <laughs> a few. Right. They're. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Just if he keeps using Chinchino well, I have faith. Chinchino's kind of broken, Loki. Um, just knock off, guys. It's not hard. Come on. Yeah, exactly. um, you knock off. I, I have. I have a perfect counter that, and that's prayer. Or right. uh, yeah. Prayer. RNG guys. RNG Jesus, I need your Ooh. help. I'm gonna need your assistance here. It sounds like you're praying to transaction Sneasler. That's what I'm listening to. When, no. when there's a when there's a dire claw, there's a way. That's all I'm gonna say. That's true. The focus stash is pretty good. I just want to shout out some good. some mons as well. I suppose that I've been taking um, some names in the league. I like Ditto making some some moves in the Rank Academy, sitting at 15th. I like the Charmeleon from Matt at 14th. Yo, Charmeleon skills. was fire. I won't lie. I forgot that mm. Solar Power was like a real ability on that thing. Yeah, it's crazy. I know you've mentioned Kev, but Lurantis from you is sitting in 8th. It's pretty nice. Uh, well, Glacier. Beyond with four is nice. Bombardier, that's what I was looking for. Bombardier for Blake with seven. Bombardier. Considering I've tried to use it in the past, um, it's impressive. Bombardier oh. is uh, sneaky strong. Mm. Why? Shout out, shout outs to uh, shout outs to <laughs> shout out to Justin's toxic group. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna shout out myself. Um, uh, that's anyway. what a great place to end it. Um, do we yeah. have anything else to cover? I think we. The time we have for today. Uh... <laughs> I think that covers everything we wanted to talk about. Um, this will probably be our... We we'll probably won't see us again until the regular season's over. Probably. Maybe. Probably. Maybe. We'll just, I mean, hopefully we, we'll get an episode out before playoffs start. And then after playoffs, we'll have one. That is that is the hope. Yeah, as of now, that is how the tables have turned. And we shall see y'all in a bit. All right. Goodbye. Back Goodbye. to the lobby. <laughs> Back to the lobby. <laughs>